Hello and good morning, CSI 257 students at Anne Arundel Community College for the fall 2014 semester, participating in the third of four courses for the Cisco Networking Academy. Today's Packet Tracer tutorial is going to be on Packet Tracer activity 4.4.2.2, configuring wireless LAN. All right, so let's jump right in. As you can see here, we've got our addressing table that we should be extremely familiar with by this point. And the scenario is, in this activity, you will configure a Linksys wireless router allowing for remote access from PCs as well as wireless connectivity with WPA2 security. You will manually configure PC wireless connectivity by entering the Linksys router SSID and password. All right, so let's jump in here for part one, configure the wireless router. And so the nice thing about this packet tracer activity is it does give you sort of a step-by-step -step instruction set on walking through the steps. So we'll start with WRS2. So we're going to click on WRS2. And as you can see here, this is what our Linksys wireless router looks like. We're going to click on the GUI tab. And we're going to set, and let's actually make this a little larger here. And so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and set the internet connection type to static IP. And as you can see here, there are DHCP server settings, router IP, and network setup. So the automatic configuration is currently set to DHCP. We're going to choose static IP address. Now remember DHCP, the dynamic host configuration protocol, is going to go out and it's going to pick up an IP address at random or a random IP address I should say from a DHCP server so we're going to choose static IP so it says set the internet connection type to static and then configure the addressing according to the addressing table so here is our addressing information for the wireless router so our internet IP address is going to be 172 dot seventeen dot eighty eight dot twenty five so one seventy two dot seventeen dot eighty eight dot twenty five and our subnet mask is a slash twenty four so two fifty five two fifty five whoops two fifty five zero and our default gateway will be one seventy two dot seventeen dot eighty eight dot one whoops 72.17.88.1 all right and it does not list any DNS servers yet so we've made our settings let's go ahead and save the settings on the wireless router and so now that those settings have been saved so step two configure the internet connection Oop, I apologize we just did that on step two so step three configure the network setup so scroll down to the network setup area which is right here and we're going to set the IP address to 172.17.40.1 and the subnet mask is already set for us here 255.255.255.0 and then we're going to scroll to the bottom and we'll click save settings all right, so we've saved our settings. So configure, configure wireless access and security. So if we come up to the top here, there's a wireless security tab. So at the top of the window, click wireless, set the network mode to be in only. So this means we're going to be serving 802.11n clients only. So we're not going to be serving 802.11a, nor are we going to ser be serving 802.11b or g clients, only in clients. All right, so change the SSID to WRS underscore LAN. Disable the SSID from being broadcast. and we're going to go ahead and click save to save our settings so under the wireless security option the security mode we definitely want to change it from disabled 
and we're going to set it to WPA2 personal. And this, in terms of a home setup, is the best encryption to use. It's the best security setup to use. WPA2 Enterprise in an enterprise environment is the strongest to use. So going back for a quick history, you had wired equivalent privacy, which was WEP, which was hacked very early on. And this is really what gave wireless a black eye. Then you had WPA Personal and WPA Enterprise, which kind of filled the gap until WPA2 came onto the scene. And so we have WPA2 as our personal setting. We're going to leave it as AES. We're going to configure the passphrase as Cisco123. We're going to scroll to the bottom of the page and we're going to save our settings. All right, now we're on to configuring the wireless client. So we've saved our settings. I'm going to go ahead and close this down. So configure PC3 for wireless connectivity. So let's make this a little larger. So with the PC3, we'll click on Desktop. And then we're going to click PC Wireless. And the PC Wireless tab is going to open up. So we're going to click on the Profiles tab. See if we can make that any larger. It's kind of a set size here. So that's going to be a set size, a little small. So we're going to click New, because we're going to create a new wireless profile. And the name of that profile is going to be Wireless Access. And we'll say OK. We're going to click Advanced Setup. And now Infrastructure or Ad Hoc Mode. We're going to want Infrastructure Mode, because we're going to be connecting to a wireless router and the wireless router is providing infrastructure mode services so that other clients can access it via the wireless medium. The ad hoc mode would be if I want to connect directly to another device. So an analogy would be similar to sort of a point to point connection where I'm connecting to one other device. All right, so we're going to leave it in infrastructure mode. We're going to type in the SSID that we created on the router, which was WRS underscore LAN. And we're going to click Next. And now it's coming up and it's asking us, do we want to use DHCP? So we're going to choose Obtain Network Settings Automatically. And it's already picked for us, and so we'll click Next. And the security is disabled, <clears throat> excuse me, but we want to use WPA2 Personal as the method of encryption and then we're going to click Next and then we're going to enter our passphrase which is Cisco123. We'll click Next. We get to take a look at our settings and then we're going to click Save and then Connect a Network. And so as you can see it says no association with the access point and now it's gone out and it's gone through the authentication and association process and so we have good signal strength and a good link quality and so we are connected so now verify PC3 wireless connectivity and IP addressing configuration so for that we could come over to IP address configuration so you can see we've been given a DHCP static of an APIPA address 169.254 so it says DHCP failed APIPA is being used all right, so we've got a DHCP issue, possibly. So the signal strength and link quality meters are good. For more information, we can go here to see the details of the connection, including IP address information. So close the PC wireless configuration window. So we'll go ahead and close it. As you can see, this link was not here before. It is here now. So all PCs should have connectivity to one another. So we're missing 20 points. So let's take a look. Let's check our results and see where we're at here. So the DHCP enable and the connects to the fast Ethernet and the type. So it looks like we're going to have to connect, obviously, the wireless, ran wireless LAN router right, is not connected into the infrastructure. So if we take a look up here, 
you can see that the WRS2 NIC, which we configured earlier, has that information on it. And we're going to have to go into either switch one or router one. So let's take a look. Oh, we went right by it. Step one. So we're going to configure the WRS router. And we're going to go from the internet interface into switch one. And we're going to do that into FA07. So we'll configure that and we're going to allow spanning tree to do its thing. So I'm going to come back into the router here. And we're going to take a look at the DHCP setup. It's possible that I walked by something in the DHCP setup. So DHCP server, and this is for our wireless clients. And I thought I'd seen that as enabled. So we're going to go ahead and enable this. Our starting IP is going to be 192.168.1.100. The maximum number of IPs we're going to give out is 50. And here's the DNS information if we needed to add any DNS information in. So let's save these settings. And now let's come back to PC3, take a look at the IP information. And as you can see, we now have a DHCP address. However, it looks like it's in a different range, the 172.17.40, than what was left there as the default. So we're at 100 out of 100. However, the DHCP server settings, ah, it, <laughs> interesting is that it automatically changed those when we clicked enabled and maybe I didn't see it when I click save but it should have been 192.168 but it looks like it's automatically changed these for you okay so that is how we wirelessly configure the PC with the adapter software that's how you configure the wireless LAN router we connected it into the infrastructure I mistakenly went right by step one into step two so we connected it into the infrastructure so that it can get in and out of the infrastructure. And so now let me try to ping the other PCs that are out there. How about 172.17.20.22. So the first request is going to timeout. And the second request timed out and then we had success. So subsequent pings, as long as the MAC address for the default gateway stays in my cache, should be good. So let's see what happens if I ping over to 21. So our first request times out. Second request times out. Oh, I'm sorry, I've got the wrong IP address in there, actually. So let's go back, 172.17.10.21. So it always helps if you're pinging the right IP address. All right, so there we go. Okay, so this has been Packet Tracer Tutorial 4.4.2.2 on configuring a wireless LAN. And hopefully this has cleared up any confusion that you may have had and has helped you out to be able to make the configuration changes you need. All right, best of luck and see you this week.